A new glass is here, guys. We've got a gingerbread man. Gone is the Halloween mug. Christmas is here. Sort of. Hey guys, what's up? It's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. And if you've come back, thank you so much. Today, you guys, I thought I would do a video for you that I actually did over on my TikTok, but I thought it'd be nice to actually sit down and have a nice chat about it because it is very popular at the moment to do this little tag. It also helps me keep accountable as well because since I made that video on TikTok, I um, have read some of the books and I don't like... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Today, guys, we are doing my 10 before the end. So the 10 books that I would like to read before the end of 2024. Am I aware that today is the 7th of November? Yes. Will I read 10 books between now and my yearly reading wrap up? Who knows, but a girl can dream. <laughs> anyway, I've got eight physical books here and there are two books that are yet to be released that I have on my radar that I'm so excited to get into because a lot of these I either said that I really wanted to read at the beginning of the year or they're just ones that have caught my eye this year that have become super popular that I want to be ahead of the curveball on. Also, I have changed our location slightly today because I have just started getting ready for bookmas or vlogmas, however you want to call it. And I actually just filmed the first video for that yesterday. Um, hence why you guys can't see my main uh, bookshelf for reasons you will find out on Bookmas. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. But yeah, I am gonna be doing the 12 days of Bookmas this year. Um, it's my first year on YouTube and I'm so excited to do that. I've just, yeah, been wanting to do it for a very long time. Anyways, today we are gonna go through all 10 of these books that I need to read before the end of the year. So without further ado, let's get comfy, let's get cozy and let's get right on into the video. All right, so as I said, I've got eight of these books in the physical form and then two of them have yet to be released. So should I talk about the ones that are not out? Out yet maybe we'll do the ones that are not out yet and then we'll get into these bad boys so the two books that I want to read before the end of the year the first one okay can I actually tell you guys the biggest prank the biggest prank anyways let me just show you the book is so I would love to read Lost and Lassoed by Lila Sage okay it's the third book in the Rebel Blue Ranch series and I was under the impression that this book came out on the 5th of November as it was in the States right so the Americans got this book on the 5th of November. I thought we were gonna get it as well because there was another release that came out on the 5th that is in that stack there that I said, okay, double release date. Um, however, when I went to the store and I went to look for it, um, no, I was pranked. I'm sick of this. It comes out on the 12th in the physical copy. Like I can buy it on Kindle, but I don't wanna read the Kindle version for $12 when I can buy it for $12, you know. Lost and Lassoed by Lila Sage is book three in the Rebel Blue Ranch series. If you have not heard of this series before, it is a small town cowboy romance series and you guys know no. We love, it's my bread and butter, okay? So book number three, this is an interconnected standalone series. So you are more than welcome to pick up any of the books in this series. So far there has been Done and Dusted and Swift and Saddled. Swift and Saddled has been my favorite so far. This one here follows a very exciting couple and I cannot wait. I'm actually screeching my head off that I did not get my hands on it on Tuesday. I have to wait another week to get it because I need this book like it's actually not funny so this book follows Teddy and Gus and because all the books are interconnected standalones we have met these characters already and I have been amped for their story for such a long time so let me get the synopsis up on Goodreads okay she thrives in chaos he prefers routine the only thing they have in common how much they hate each other <laughs> I'm so excited for this book Teddy Anderson doesn't have a plan. She's never needed one before. She's always been more of a go with the flow type of girl, but for some reason, the flow doesn't seem to be going her way this time. Her favorite vintage suede jacket has a hole in it, her sewing machine is broken, and her best friend just got engaged. Suddenly, everything feels like it's starting to change. Teddy's used to being a leader, but now she feels like she's getting left behind, wondering if the life she lives in the small town she loves is enough for her anymore. Gus Ryder has a lot on his plate. He doesn't know what's taking care of his family's 8,000 acre ranch or parenting his spunky six-year-old daughter who is staying with him for the summer. Gus has always been the dependable one, but when his workload starts to overwhelm him, he slips up and he has to admit that he can't manage everything on his own. He needs help. His little sister's best friend, the woman he can't stand, is not who he had in mind. 
But when no one else can step in, Teddy's the only option he's got. Teddy decides to use the summer to try and figure out what she wants out of life. Gus, on the other hand, starts to worry that he'll never find what he needs. Tempers flare, tensions build, and for the first time ever, Gus and Teddy start to see each other in a different light. As new feelings start to simmer below the surface, they must decide whether or not they can act on them. Can they keep things cool or will both of them get burnt? I am so excited for this book, you guys. I'm obsessed with... This is going to be Boss and Nanny. It's going to be enemies to lovers. And like Teddy is one of my favorite characters. She reminds me so much of Willa from Heartless. Just like so freewheeling, crazy, like can't be tied down. And anyway, I'm ecstatic for that book. So I will be getting my hands on that on the 12th of November, Australia. Guys, like I don't understand why in Australia we get like books like a week or two later sometimes. Sometimes it's all on the same day, but like sometimes it really... It irks me. I just, I need to move overseas, clearly. Okay, and the second book that I have on my radar that I do not have the physical of, because it hasn't been released in Australia yet, in the physical, it's been released on Kindle, I believe. Or maybe I'm wrong. I think I'm just waiting for the trad pub, because I think on Amazon it's so expensive. It is Quicksilver by Callie Hart. This just blew up this year, especially over on TikTok. I think it just became like this, ma it's huge by the way. If anybody owns the physical or has seen the physical, how many pages is this thing? The ebook is 600 pages, but I, I don't know. I've seen the physical and it looks ginormous. This is a romanticy, a dark romanticy, I wanna say. And I know that it's being tried pubbed maybe next month. So let's have a look what the description says. This is another long one. Do not touch the sword, do not turn the key, do not open the gate. In the land of the unforgiving desert, there isn't much a girl wouldn't do for a glass of water. 24 year old, oh my gosh, these fantasy names, Cyrus Fane, is good at keeping secrets. No one knows about the strange powers she possesses or the fact that she has been picking pockets and stealing from the undying queen's reservoirs for as long as she can remember. But a secret is like a knot. Sooner or later, it is bound to come undone. When Cyrus comes face to face with death himself, she inadvertently reopens a gateway between realms and is transported to a land of ice and snow. The Fae have always been the stuff of myth or legends or nightmares, but it turns out they're real. And Cyrus has landed herself right in the middle of a centuries long conflict that might just get her killed. The first of her kind to tread the frozen mountains of Irelia. Oh, uh, Irelia, I don't know. Irelia, welcome to Illyria. Okay, we get it, we get it, okay? Cyrus mistakenly binds herself to King Fisher. A handsome fae warrior who has secrets and nefarious agendas of his own. Will he use her alchemist magic to protect his people no matter what it costs him or her? Death has a name. It is King Fisher. His past is murky. His attitude stinks. And he's the only way Cyrus is going to make it home. Be careful of the deals you make, dear child. The devil is in the details. That sounds so good. Like I was saying, it's got that dark romance element, even though it is a fantasy. It's giving me Faye, it's giving me Akatar, and that's what I need out of life sometimes, you know? And I also, guys, just got Kindle Unlimited today, again, and I'll tell you why. And I know if you've been following me for a while, you know why I got rid of Kindle Unlimited. The only reason I got it is because I downloaded books that I already own the physical copies of. I just find it easier to read on my Kindle. Anyways, that's Quicksilver. I'm gonna show you guys the first one that I'm actually currently reading because I think that's nice to get it. It's a nice segue from the Kindle Unlimited thing. So I got Kindle Unlimited last night at like midnight because I wanted to keep reading this, but I was so tired and you know, because it's a giant book, I did not want to like hold it while I was in bed. So I got it on KU because I didn't realize it was on KU. Anyways, We Have Hexed by Emily McIntyre. So this was on my list that I wanted to read before the end of the year. This is the fifth and final book, I want to say, correct me if I'm wrong, in the Never After series by Emily McIntyre. So if you haven't heard of this series before, this is essentially a standalone series. So there are five books, but they're complete standalones. And each of the books like covers a reimagining of our favorite childhood like stories and fairy tales right so we've got like peter pan the lion king the wizard of oz aladdin hunchback of notre dame and now this one is the little mermaid so i've had my eye on this for such a long time and this one did actually release on tuesday on the 5th of november and i went to pick it up and it's huge you guys look how big this book is it's definitely the biggest in the series it is 500 and 
Oh, there's an extended epilogue. I always do this and I better not spoil myself. 513 pages. So it is a chunker and I absolutely love this. I just want to quickly say as well, if anybody knows Emily McIntyre and has been following her story for a while, this incredible woman wrote this book whilst having cancer treatment for stage four breast cancer. And I just think that is so incredible. And I'm emotional thinking about it. And I just like, I'm so lucky like to be able to be reading her works. And I just think she's such a, a fabulous person and a fabulous author. So it's such a blessing that we got this, but it was, you know, yeah. Anyway, I'm just in awe of her that she continues to do this. Anyways, shall I read the back of this? Like I said, this is an inspired retelling or reimagining of the Little Mermaid. But of course our villain gets the girl or gets the guy. So let me read you the back. He's the prince of La Costa Narosa and she is the witch who steals his heart. Vanessa Anderson has never been good. She wasn't good enough for her parents and she isn't good enough for the gangster uncle who took her in after they died. But she's cunning, beautiful, deceitful to her uncle's demands and she doesn't have time for a moral compass anyway. When her runaway cousin returns to their coastal southern town, she brings a man with her and and Vanessa soon realizes he's the only one who's ever seen her for her. It's just one problem. She can never have him. Enzo, lover boy, Marino is a wealthy businessman by day and prince of the underworld by night. Underboss to the notorious mafia syndicate, he answers to no one except his father, the strongest Don in the Northeast. When he's tasked with marriage, Enzo doesn't think twice until he meets his fiance's cousin. Vanessa is everything he knew he wanted, bewitching him with her sultry voice and supple curves. But Enzo learned long ago that for a man like him, life is better without the things you want. When plans unravel and temptation sings its siren song, they'll both have to choose what's more important, duty to their families or a forbidden love that was never supposed to be. <laughs> this book is so good you guys i can't even tell you i'm currently 354 pages in so my chapter 39 i'm way more past the halfway mark i'm currently reading this for a reading vlog that will be coming out on tuesday monday monday tuesday i'm reading 200 pages in a day um and i'm just flying through this like literally like i said to you guys i wanted to be in my bed last night and read this even though it was like so dark and i didn't want because it, it's such a heavy book i had to get ku to like continue reading it it's super good, so I can't wait to finish this and give you guys my thoughts on it at the end of the month. Next one I have, I've been pretty good this year in terms of like any new releases that have come out that at least that I've had my radar on. Obviously, if they're a new release and I don't know about them, like I've obviously not read them. But if it's a new release and I've got my eye on it, I've been really good at, you know, reading those books and reviewing them pretty straight up. I've been pretty good. So every book that's like come out, I have been either graciously sent an early copy or I've been like getting it on release day and reading it super fast. So I've been pretty on top of it. The only book this year that has released that I purchased and have not read yet, and this is really bad because she's one of my favorite authors, is King of Sloth by Anna Huang. Okay, so this is book number four in the Kings of Sin series. And I love this series. I pretty much have read everything Anna's written. I've even read The Striker, which is her newest release. I just don't know why. This one just slipped through the cracks because I bought it and then I just didn't read it for some reason. And that's just not, it's not good. So this is part of her Kings of Sin series, which is a billionaire romance series. Again, interconnected standalones. And basically there's gonna be seven books, right? So we're gonna have each of the different sins, right? So, so far we've had King of Wrath, King of Pride, King of Greed, and now King of Sloth. And I believe the other day she just announced King of Envy. So excited, which means I need to hurry up and read this. So let me read the back. This says he'd never wanted anybody enough to chase them until he met her. Charming, easygoing, and rich beyond belief, Xavier Costello has the world at his fingertips. He also has no interest in taking over his family's empire, much to his father's chagrin. But that hasn't stopped women from throwing themselves at him, unless the woman in question is his publicist. <laughs> Nothing brings him more joy than riling her up, but when a tragedy forces them closer than ever, he must grapple with the uncertainty of his future and the realization that the only person immune to his charms is the only one he truly wants. Cool, intelligent, and ambitious. Sloane Kensington is a high-powered publicist who's used to dealing with difficult clients. However, none infuriate or tempt her more than a certain billionaire heir with his stupid dimples and laid-back attitude. She may be forced to work with him, but she'll never fall for him, no matter how fast he makes her heart beat or how thoughtful he is beneath his party persona. He's her client, and that's all he'll ever be. 
right? I'm so excited. I've also heard so many people say that this is like, okay, like let's take a moment and be serious, okay? Twisted Games is the Anna Huang book. Like in my eyes so far, nothing has topped that book. It's like on another level. Her books are great. All of them are great, but nothing has come close to that. However, when this came out, I saw a lot of people saying like, this is giving Twisted Games a run for its money. So I don't know why I haven't got to it yet. It's not even that big. It's like... 430 pages. I could read this. I could read it soon, babes. You know, I don't know what. If you've read King of Sloth, please, please let me know what you thought of it because I just, I need to get onto it. And I just know I'm gonna love it. Did you, did you just see how I reacted to the ending there? Anyway, that's King of Sloth. I'm gonna get this one out of the way too because this is a book, but it is part of an entire series. Um, and I said that I was gonna read this entire series this year. I didn't, I decided to read it's sister series instead and I loved it, it became my entire personality. However, it is, like I said, less than two months before the end of the year and I have only read one book in this like eight book series. Okay, before the end of 2024, I have to at least read Crown of Midnight, okay? Book number two in the Throne of Glass, Glass? <laughs> Throne of Glass series, okay. So, for those who are unfamiliar with my face, if you have heard me say this already, I, I do apologize. I read the first two books in Throne of Glass as they were like being published back in the day, right? I then bought the rest of the series but just didn't continue it. So I do have those two books in my memory. So I know a lot of people like to do Assassin's Blade first. Because I've already read the first two, I'm gonna go in pub order because that's how the queen also says I should do it. So I read Throne of Glass two months ago. Last month I didn't get to read the next but I know that I wanna at least read this this month or next month because I want to just like have these two under my belt again I wanted to do a reread and then I'm gonna move on to Air of Fire so I can't read the back of this one because this is book two in a series and I don't want to spoil it for any people who you know haven't heard of it because I say a lot <laughs> I just feel like on the internet we're way too like lenient about giving spoilers about massive series and I was talking to one of my best friends in real life uh, a couple of weeks ago about this series and we were saying how like, okay, name spoilers, like name spoilers. If you've read the series, you get it. But name spoilers are just thrown around like it's fine. It's not the biggest like deal ever. So I know so much about this series and I haven't even read past the first two books. You know what I mean? And that's really sad. Like, it's not like I'm even looking at, like I'm not even searching for those spoilers and I'm getting them on my like for you page. I'm getting them on like YouTube videos without spoiler warnings. And that just makes it really sad. I was really lucky with Akatar. I did not know like literally anything about that series except for Tamlin. That's the only name I knew and recent. I just knew the names, but I didn't know anything about the story. This one's different. I know so much about this story and I haven't even even read it and that's just really sad so we need to stop doing that anyway crown of midnight book number two i would like to get through it before the end of the year i have to keep me accountable please okay let's get let's do two two by the same author two by the same author because i have talked about these books a lot but i've got two books by abby jimenez because i've not read anything by abby jimenez and i feel like i'm missing out like it's like it's not cute first i have part of your world okay I do also have yours truly here and I'll be talking about that in a minute. I have to read these two before I'm allowed to buy just for the summer. Whilst these are standalones, they are like somewhat a tiny bit interconnected is what people have told me because funny story i read or started listening to yours truly on spotify i think last year and then i found out that i have to read this first even though they are completely standalones they just are a tiny bit connected anyways whatever part of your world by abby jimenez it's an age gap romance that's all i know so far but i know that i have to start here even though i really want to read yours truly <laughs> okay so this says after a wild bet alexis montgomery has had her world turn upside down the cause daniel grant a ridiculously hot carpenter who's 10 years younger than her and is as casual as they come the complete opposite of sophisticated city girl alexis and yet their chemistry is undeniable while her extra wealthy parents want her to carry on the family legacy alexis doesn't need glory or fame she's fine with being a mere er doctor and every minute she spends with daniel and the tight-knit town where he lives she's discovering what's really important yet letting their relationship become anything more than a short-term fling would mean turning her back on her family and giving up the opportunity to help thousands of people bringing daniel into her world is impossible and yet she can't give up the joy she's found with him either with so many differences between them how can alexis possibly choose between her world 
and his. I can't wait to read this. I feel like this is going to be very cute. I love a forbidden romance. It's one of my favorite tropes. So yeah, that's part of your world. And then yours truly, I want to read this so bad because so many of my bookish friends as well adore this book. It's like a five star infinity Roman empire like book read for them. So I believe from what I remember that I read last year, this is set in a hospital and these are two doctors and there's great mental health representation, even in the first like couple of chapters that I listened to. So this says a novel of terrible first impressions, hilarious second chances and the joy in finding the perfect match. Dr. Brianna's life is seriously flatlining. Her divorce, her div send help. Her divorce is about to be finalized. Her brother's running out of time to find a kidney donor and that promotion she wants. Oh, that's probably going to the new man doctor who's already registering 87 on Brianna's pain in the butt scale. But just when all systems are set to hate, Dr. Jacob Maddox completely flips the game by sending Brianna a letter. It's a really good letter. Like the kind that proves that Jacob isn't actually Satan. Worse, he might be this fantastically funny and subversely likable guy who's terrible at first impressions because suddenly he and Brie are exchanging notes and sharing lunch dates in her sub closet. When Jacob turns out to be the perfect donor for her brother, Brie starts to realize that this quietly sexy new doctor might just be her perfect match too. I just know I'm gonna cry. You know, like that's how I feel. This book is gonna leave me hollow. Again, if you've read this, holler at your girl, put it in the comments because I just know it's gonna destroy me. Am I gonna yap? Like, am I gonna carry on and yap for 35,000 years? I just, look how beautiful it is. I know it's gonna hurt. Next we have something a little bit different, but it's one that I've been wanting to read because you guys know I love Bridgerton and obviously like I love that whole like world and I love Regency romance, but I really want to expand because I have noticed this year that Regency romance just like is such a beautiful palette cleanser. It's like the best kind of escapism. Like I, I get it, it's a bit unrealistic, but like, you know what? I love it. I'm not here for realism, that's why I read, right? So I have wanted to expand my horizons past Julia Quinn, I love her but I would like to, you know, expand my horizons, like I said. So when I was at Dimmix in Brisbane a couple of months ago, they have an amazing Regency romance section that's like newer too. Like I've got a lot over behind me, you can't see, but I've got a whole stack of secondhand, like the little old Regency romance books. But I found a, like a section that has newer ones, right? And I came across this and it just sounds so up my alley. This is A Bride by Morning and this is by Katrina Kendrick. Look how stinking cute this is. I'm so excited. On the front, it says, he's a heartbreaker, she's a wallflower, and you guys know. <laughs> That's my favorite combo. Okay, so let's read the back. He's a heartbreaker. Gabriel St. Clair, the Earl of Montgomery, has a reputation for being the most charming gentleman in London. But to Miss Lydia Cecil, he is the man who shattered her heart. Sound familiar? Gabriel. <laughs> Beefing with Colin Bridgerton, even though he's the love of my life, is a daily occurrence. Gabriel would rather hate Lydia than learn the truth. He's a British spy and his enemies are closing in. She's a wallflower. Lydia has settled into her life as a companion for her elderly aunt. But when she witnesses Gabriel gather intelligence on a foreign enemy, she's suddenly thrown into his dangerous game of espionage. To save her life, Gabriel is forced to marry the girl he once abandoned. Their greatest threat may be their past. As husband and wife match wits, their greatest threat may not be the assassins on their heels, but learning to set aside their past or risk losing their love for good. I'm so excited. So guys, I forget that I have these books on my shelves and it's actually embarrassing because how cute does that sound? It's also super short. It's like, oh my God, it's like 280 pages and the text is nice and big. Guys, this might have to be one that I read soon. Cause every time I go over to my Regency books, I'm like, I need to read you. I need to read you more than anything. And spies, like be for real. Like I said, it's like newer. And there's there's a couple others in this series. There's like His Scandalous Lessons, Tempting the Scoundrel, and A Wicked Touch. If I like this, I've not read anything by Katrina Kendrick before, but if I like it, you best believe I'll be there. Okay, I'll be there. Next, we have a big boy. And this is on my monthly TBR. So if you guys have seen that video, you know what I'm about to hold up, but I said I'm doing it this month. I don't know if it'll be this week because I've already read a chunky book this week, but it's happening this month and it's happening this year. Okay, if I don't, Hold me accountable. You're allowed to yell at me in the comments. I'll allow it. Okay. Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. Okay. Yeah, this is just like the internet's new favorite series. It's always been the internet's favorite series, but more than anything this year, like I just feel like I see it 
everywhere and I have been putting it off because what do you have to say that is that large? In the most serious way, what do you have to say? So this is part of the Boys of Toman, Toman series, however you want to say it. Um, and I believe there's like six books in this series so far, okay? And they're like, are they two duets each? I don't know. Three duets. Anyways, let's read the back. Because it's sports romance, but I believe it's set in a high school, which is another thing that I've sort of been putting off. But this is one more so that I want to read, not only because I want to read it, but also because I want to know what all the hype's about. And also, I want to know if I've clowned myself by waiting this long like I did with uh, Akatar. Anyways, this says, When two worlds collide, nothing will ever be the same again. Johnny Kavanagh has everything going for him. Primed for stardom on the rugby pitch, he's a force to be reckoned with. Nothing will stop him hitting the heights, not even the shy new girl at Toman College with sad eyes and hidden bruises. The one that distracts him as no one ever has. Life has been pretty easy for Shannon Lynch. She arrives at the prestigious private school praying for a fresh start, desperate to shake off the demons that plague her. On her very first day, she encounters the notorious Johnny Kavanagh. Instantly drawn to him, Shannon finds herself once again the target of bullies as she forms a fragile alliance with rugby's rising star. But as they fall into a complicated relationship and grapple with their undeniable chemistry, Johnny and Shannon cannot foresee the obstacles that will threaten their blossoming relationship. That sounds great. Why is it this big? Like, what is this? 800 pages. It better be worth it. Hold me accountable. And last, but certainly not least, is another cute little romanticy. And again, we're feeding into that Regency element, but this one just sounds oh, so good. This is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. Okay, I picked this up a couple of months ago. I actually saw the beginning whisperings of this book late last year on Book Talk. And what I did hear people say was it is like Bridgerton, but in a fey world or like with fairies. And I was like, oh, combining two things that I love in one, amazing, right? It doesn't look like it from the front that it would be like fairies and like Regency, but let me read you the back. It's difficult to find a husband in Regency England when you're a young lady with only half a soul. Ever since she was cursed by a fairy, Theodora Eddings has had no sense of fear or embarrassment, a condition which makes her prone to accidental scandal. Dora hopes, should I read this as Lady Whistle? No. <laughs> Dora hopes to be a quiet, sensible wallflower during the London season, but after the strange, handsome, and utterly uncouth Lord Saucier discovers her condition, she is instead drawn into dangerous and peculiar fairy affairs. If Dora's reputation can survive both her curse and her sudden connection with the least liked man in all of high society, then she may yet reclaim the normal place in the world. But the longer Dora spends with Elias Wilder, the more she begins to suspect that one may indeed fall in love even with only half a soul. That just sounds so cute. And again, super short. What is it? 270 pages. Again, this will be a nice little just like quick read. I'm thinking of doing a 24 hour reading challenge soon. So hopefully we can add this into the mix because yeah, I've just heard nothing but good things about this. And I just think it's so different. Like I've never, I mean, maybe I just haven't seen anything else because I did only start reading Romanticy this year, but I haven't heard of anything like this before. So that's that. Alrighty, you guys, that is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for sticking through all the way to the end. If you did, I really, really appreciate it. What are the 10 books that you guys would like to read before the end of 2024? Now, look, I'm not saying that I'm going to read every single one of these books, but they are priorities. Like, I need to read them before the end of the year because, you know, I've either been wanting to read them for a long time or I said I was going to read them at the beginning of this year or they've just gained massive popularity and I need to be in the know. You know, I'm sick of missing out. So let me know what you guys are planning to read at the end of this year. As always, if you guys aren't already, you are more than welcome to follow me on TikTok and on Instagram. I will leave my handles on the screen and in the description. And if you aren't already, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel and make sure you are hitting that notification bell. That way you are notified each time a brand new video goes up. As I was saying earlier, you guys, there will be a reading vlog up on Monday or Tuesday next week because I haven't done one in a hot minute and I wanted to start doing them again for you guys. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. And as I said, Bookmas is coming. Vlogmas is coming. I need to start prepping now because to have 12 videos ready to go, you know, they, they've got to be ready in advance. So my second question to you guys is... For Vlogmas, for Bookmas, what do you guys want to see? Like, do you want reading vlogs? Do you want recommendation vlogs? Do you want like decoration vlogs? You know, setting up the Christmas tree, like cooking, baking, crafting. Let me know what you guys want to see because I'm just so excited 
for it. I went and bought a bunch of decorations and obviously as you can see Christmassy things yesterday. Yeah, I just I'm so excited to to show you that. So again, make sure you subscribe for Vlogmas. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by again. I really appreciate it. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a lovely day or a lovely night and I will see you all next time. Bye.